This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. This job would be great if it wasn't for the fucking customers. We're always this stupid and you take lessons. Just calm down. Oh, fuck you! You can't handle the truth! This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. In other words, be nice, asshole. Welcome! To another episode of Q's and Cucumber, the podcast where we point and laugh at stupid companies, customers, and coworkers alike. I'm Lar Mack. I'm Tanya Edwards. And I'm Jessica James. Woohoo! So yes, <laughs> I sound like death. I apologize, everybody. I am deathly ill. <laughs> but we but finally got but I'm here. But we're all here. Um, because today is a very important day. Well, yesterday was a very important day because we have been waiting for years since we started covering this bitch. And it finally happened. Miss <laughs> Elizabeth Holmes has been sentenced for her crimes. Yay! <laughs> it's so about are, damn time. So we are going to discuss. But there was a surprise because just because this bitch cannot fucking help herself, he managed all the way up till the end to just keep fucking with us. Just he's a bitch. This bitch. <laughs> what a fucking Wait, whore. Say it, say, it before, say it again. This bitch. This bitch. I the hate her. Audacity. The audacity audacity of this bitch just knows no bound so we're gonna talk about it we have to so first thing that popped up that i actually sent to tanya and jess before the sentencing we'll talk about this first because this is fucking funny she said elizabeth holmes asked the judge to please be nice to her Tanya's flipping off the screen. <laughs> Fuck her. Fuck her. This bitch. Why does she think this is what kills me? Were you nice to anybody? Right. How nice Why was it to give fake fucking test results? Was that nice? How, no. How nice was it to hire private investigators to follow around your employees and journalists and doctors looking into you? Like, was that nice? Don't, you don't right. get to sit here and play the pretty white girl card and be like, just don't be mean to me. It's Fuck called you. karma, you stupid whore. Right. Like, good God. So she could have faced up to 20 years in prison. And both the judge or both the prosecution and the defense submitted their, their recommendations for her sentencing. And the government asked for 15 years for her. And she asked for 18 months of home confinement. Which I said, Sonia, some, who was the, some guy was like, she has a better chance of Jesus coming back to life in front of her and being knighted than <laughs> getting 18 months of home confinement. Like, there's just no way that she's no. going to get that. But he asked the judge to please be nice to her. But then yesterday oh. the sentencing came. And the I was reading the Wall Street Journal because, you know, they were the ones that were on the story first um, with John Kerry Rue. So and they had like live updates as the as the sentencing was happening. One of the things that came up was this part of the article. It says more than 140 letters submitted to Judge Davila were from Ms. Holmes' family, friends, a U.S. senator, a police sergeant, a fire captain, a restaurateur, technology company executives, a retired Navy admiral, investors, government officials, and former Theranos employees and board directors served to paint a picture of her as a well-intentioned, devoted mother whose selflessness and talent should be mitigating factors for any legal consequences. Quote, Ms. Holmes has scientific gifts and interest in improving the world and 
obvious talents in leadership, wrote William Fogue, a one-time Theranos board member and former director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. She could not make those contributions while incarcerated. Motherfucker. What contribution? Fraud? She did not make any fucking contributions. What? Con she did not make any. And there was another letter written by a woman who's never even met her that the judge actually considered some woman in Ireland who was like, if you sentence her to jail, you're sentencing, you're, you're basically stifling people from wanting to go into new fields or start up a new business because they fear it might fail. It didn't fail. It was a fraud. Right. There was nothing to fail. It, what do you, oh my God, what a stupid bitch. Did she not read about any of this? What she just heard about some poor white woman who was getting, who was getting put in prison because her, you know, her experiment didn't work. No, this lady swindled people out of billions of fucking dollars and people people's lives in danger. She needs to go to fucking prison. I'm all for, you know, empowering women but this is you that shit makes us look like a bunch of uh, a bunch of fucking charlatans and whores because that's all you were throughout that entire thing you were right. a scam artist that's it and, that's and it still acting like she's a miss holmes has scientific gifts i gotta get a scientist it. She's not a scientist. She dropped out of fucking college. She's and and if she, she was, was any an kind of scientist, student. And if she like, was any kind of scientist, and when she saw that the science wasn't working, she would have not sent it out for public use. That's not right. a, a scientist. Doesn't just say, "Hey, I had this idea. Everybody do it." A, <laughs> a real it. scientist. I'm sorry. A real scientist doesn't say a chemistry occurs. When she was explaining her machine, she was like, well, a chemistry occurs. Oh, a chemistry it. occurs? That's the, You're not a scientist, bitch. You put on a white coat. That does not make you a scientist. I can put on a pilot's hat. They're not going to let me fly a Delta Airlines plane. Okay? <laughs> it doesn't fucking work that way. I don't know. There and is the a pilot that, shortage. They might. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, she'll do. <laughs> Is she sober? We're doing good. Part. Kinda. Well, sober enough. Sober is a relative term. Mm. <laughs> fucking God. It's just, it's so fucking stupid. So let's take a look here. Where was. Um. Oh. So we went through pretty much the whole day of reading all this shit of all these kind of weird updates and then finally it came down to him ex the judge explaining the judge says at least 10 theranos investors were defrauded um this annoys me u.s district uh judge that he found enough evidence to determine there were at least 10 investors in theranos who were victims of fraud, and that the total sum they were defrauded out of was $121.1 million. So basically what he's saying is, yeah, she took a billion, but you can kind of only prove that she was defrauding for $121 million. Regardless, nice. it was still fraud. It How was nice. still fraud. If she stole $5, it's fraud if mm -hmm. she no matter what she and she set out i think in the beginning she did not set out to to do anything fraudulent but i think it got away from her and with her mm -hmm. weird ass brain i think she just kept snowballing and snowballing and snowballing and then it ended up being what it ultimately was a big ass absolutely, absolutely. that's what it was and then she said um judge devilla agreed that the defense Oh, Judge Davila agreed with the defense that it it wasn't fair to consider all investors in Theranos' 2013 and 2014 funding rounds as victims. 
Why? Okay. Because they Even... be, because they had some sort of deep insight and knew that she was a fucking liar mouth. Is that what <laughs> you had... knew? So even fraud. if investors even if investors overpaid, the company stock wasn't worthless, and the value of the stock must be considered. He said, "All right." He said the stock would have been worth about thirty one point five percent less than it was had Ms. Holmes not engaged in fraud. In making that decision, Judge Davila has determined that Theranos had some underlying value, despite Ms. Holmes' many lies about the startup's capability. What value is there in a in a product that doesn't work? Right. That can't right. work. That not only doesn't work, it can't work. In our lifetime, it can't work. I don't know what you're, what value is there in that? There is none. He said there was some possible value. <laughs> and that's not how it works, sir. The possible value. Okay, then he says, Judge explains rationale ahead of sentencing. His rationale, because the government had argued that they wanted her time to be increased because of the harm done to patients and because of the fact she was the leader of Theranos, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, the leader of the fraud. Judge DeVille is that he wouldn't add time to Ms. Holmes' sentence based on the harm Theranos did to patients because she was acquitted on patient-related charges in her trial. So again, so anybody patient, who got who so anybody who got a false test result is just basically you don't matter. You don't matter. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. That what matters most is the people who got defrauded out of all this money. Get the fuck out of here. And we Get talked the, about that when the when the when the verdict came down. It really yeah. pissed me off at the time. Why it it only the only people that got hurt in this whole situation are the people that gave money. Right. Right. Not Those the are the people, people that matter. Not the people mm-hmm. who, who may have had something or was were told that they had some sort of disease. Not the pain mm-hmm. and anguish they had to go through. Or the, you know, somebody tells you, oh, okay, well, no, you're okay. Your diabetes test came back fine. Or, you know, your 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 lipids are fine. And now you're you're dead because now you've gone into a diabetic coma or you've mm-hmm. had a fucking stroke. But nah, that that doesn't mean as much as the money that that this dude over here gave her. Get the mm-hmm. fuck out of here. Now, Stupid. Now, here's the here's the paragraph that I was like, what the fuck? What does that even fucking mean? He said he wouldn't extend her sentence based on the fact that she was the undisputed leader at Theranos as its founder and chief executive. Basically, the government was saying you should extend her time because she was the leader, right? He said he's not going to. And he said, sentencing guidelines are intended to amplify the sentences for organizers of criminal activity. Not necessarily leaders of a corporation, he said. Sounds one and the same in her case. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like, sounds like the same exact role, just different environment, but the same responsibility. What do you mean? Oh, because she's the leader, she can't be the org. She's the organizer. What yeah. about what about like John she Gotti? Fucking did this. John, look how many times they got John Gotti right because he was the leader of an organization that per, that participated in crimes. And how many times? But they got him on a, I guess, a technicality because of the RICO Act, right? Mm-hmm. But Finally. wouldn't wouldn't that almost not quite organized crime? So, but it would still hold her responsible for for what she's done because she was the leader and the fucking organizer. Right. That's what this was her like, little magic fucking is... Betty, easy bake oven blood machine. She fucking came up with. <laughs> she, 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 quite, she turned a good, honestly, the, the easy bake oven. I'm down with that description because she took a, they took a glue dispensing robot and <laughs> gutted it and put a, a pipette in it and called it, a, called it their tech. That's I got some pipe so- cleaners, an easy bake oven, and a glue gun. I'm going to make Man. some shit. <laughs> and I'm going to get a billion dollars for this and idea. And some PVC pipe. I'm good. 
I just don't, I would really love that judge to explain to me why this, he's splitting hairs in the weirdest of ways that I just don't understand. But finally, um, Elizabeth Holmes spoke briefly and tearfully in the court uh, before the judge read her sentence. She said, I am devastated by my failings. Every day for the past years, I felt deep pain for what people went through because I failed them. Oh, you suck it. didn't fail them. You scammed them. There's right. a big difference. <laughs> There's a big difference. She's sticking, it's the Wanda Sykes joke. You got to stick with your lie. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. what got Bill Clinton in trouble? He didn't stick with the lie, right? OJ <laughs> stuck with the lie. But... Like, you got to stick with your you lie. You got to stick with the lie. She is sticking with that lie that she didn't scam anybody. She just failed. Right. No, you scammed them. Your your failure resulted in a scam. How about that? Jesus Christ! And you went on with it. That's that's what how that's how I feel. Your failure resulted in a scam, and you went on with the charade. That's that's mm -hmm. what she did. Yeah. Yep. So eventually, uh, Judge Edward Davila sentenced her to 11.25 years in prison, which was way more than I thought yeah. she was going to get, quite frankly. Yeah. I didn't think she was going to get much, but mm -mm. I'll take it. Um, they're actually, it's the, her sentencing, I didn't realize, isn't over. The judge still has to say how much money she's got to pay in restitution. Oh, he hasn't said that yet. But the fact that he's saying, oh, she own, yeah, she stole a billion, but really we should only count 121 million of that. It's going to be nothing. Whatever. It really doesn't matter. So um, she's got, sorry. No, go ahead. Is she actually going to see any of that jail time? Like, is she going to have to go in to do it? Or is it going to be mm -hmm. like she gets a pampered little room in a closet somewhere? Oh, no, she's going to have to go in and do it, but I'm sure she's going to be pampered, and here's why. And it'll probably be like a federal prison where it's not yeah. as hard. But as... she does have to serve 85% of the time. She doesn't get so like, that's 11 time years, off. so she'll be in there, what, eight, nine years? Yeah. What about, uh, is that regardless of parole? Oh, okay, so yeah, with even if behavior. with good behavior, she has to serve 85% of it. Mm-hmm. She has 14 days to appeal her conviction and appeal as expected. Um, her lawyers are trying to keep her out of prison uh, on bail until the appeal is over. She is supposed to report to jail on April 27th. How do you but, to just report to jail? Well, that's how these kind of cases, honestly, that's not unusual. It's that's, that's how most of these cases work. <laughs> but, so what day works for you to turn yourself in? So I know, right? The real world. <laughs> but there was a, a paragraph that I sent to Tanya, and Tanya sent me the look on her face. <laughs> I just came across that this morning when I was looking for one of the links she sent in our list. I was, I was like, oh, how did I miss that picture? <laughs> I was like, wait, what? So I'm reading it, and again, didn't know this, but here's the paragraph. And Tanya's face said it all. I was like, holy fuck. Quote, Ms. Holmes had sought home confinement and community service and no more than 18 months in prison. Her lawyers, her lawyers in their request for leniency, positioned the 38-year-old as a caring friend and a loving mother with a toddler at home and a second child on the way. Apparently, so, she is heavily pregnant at this point. Like, so, and, and, and Loris, Loris sends us this, this, this little snippet of the article, and it said, read this and tell me when you see it. <laughs> All I could, I gasped in my face. <gasps> this whore got herself knocked up in order to stay out of prison. Twice. So, is she married? No. So no. She, it, her her partner, her boyfriend, whatever, her little boy toy that she managed to. Well, the only reason I asked is because when I saw you guys messaging about this, I was like, why why would anybody even 
connect themselves to her that way but you know oh she's got a a rich family like he's he's an heir he's a hotel heir okay and she got hooked up with him and his family so he's probably just as corrupt as she is maybe well he's he's a he's way younger than her Oh really? She's, she's scammed him, and everybody knows it. She's well. Him. Okay, so she's she she's his family. Turnabout like, is fair play. So okay. wasn't she enticed or whatever by Sonny because he was five days older than God, fucking with her little seventeen-year-old ass, and they were together for a long time, coming up with this game. <laughs> And now she's got another person who's probably, and now she's playing the role of Sunny. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. it'll always be that she's still a victim because now before, remember, it was the big, bad, brown guy. And she was just this young, naive little girl. And now it will be, now it will be, oh, well, now I've been, you know, enticed or with the money or told me I couldn't see my children if I didn't do this and this. So it's always leading back to her being the victim. I'm I'm sorry. I guess I'm I, I'm unaware of this situation. The big bad brown guy? Sunny oh, Bugwall. Sunny. So okay. yeah, he was an Indian. This was her this whole scam was perpetrated by her and her CFO. His name is Sonny Balwani. hmm I feel like we should revisit this whole story again with Jess. But Oh my god, did you watch that movie, the show? I haven't yet, no. no. Okay. I've I've but, I've gone past it a few times and I just Sonny, Sonny and her met. Yeah, Sonny and her met. He was like forty. She was, or he was like thirty-seven. She was seventeen. Right. Okay. And eventually, they became a secret couple. But he helped her, and eventually came on board as her CFO and was her enforcer. He was, he was part of the fraud. Like okay. it was the two of them at the top of this company committing this fraud. And she yeah. tried to lay it off. He's he's Indian, and she tried to lay it off on this big, scary, older brown guy that manipulated her into doing all this, and it wasn't her fault. Oh, um, whatever. <clears throat> but she's just, the fact she's what I was just gonna say. She's just conniving in all kinds of ways. Oh yeah, she really but, is. So she popped up pregnant. Okay, you you right. gotta. Okay, this case had been going on for years and then Mm -hmm. right before the trial was supposed to start she pops up pregnant and she just her due date just happens to be the month her trial was supposed to start which i was like "Uh uh-huh that don't and everybody said it everybody who specifically knows her yeah like yeah she got pregnant this is just sympathy trying to stay out of prison okay (laughs) And because... trying to trying to avoid being convicted, right? Now all of a sudden you're telling me, and it didn't work. She obviously right. still got. It might have worked at least on some of the charges she got acquitted for. I don't know. But then you're telling me that a year plus later she just happens to show up to her sentencing pregnant again, right, right at the perfect moment that you're about to be sentenced. What kind of irresponsible piece of shit are, I get that you're about to, you might be going to prison for a bunch of years and this might be your last chance to have kids, but I'm sorry, that is a selfish fucking thing to do, to have two children, not just one, two, even if, let's just give her the benefit of the doubt, even though she doesn't deserve it and say that she didn't have these children for sympathy. What if it is just to have kids? What kind of selfish monster are you knowing you could be going away for their entire childhoods? That is right. selfish. Yeah. It's it, so now she's got to explain to two kids why she had them just to try to avoid conviction and a long prison term and that it didn't work. The way to saddle your kids with guilt. You know, it's going to be like, well, mommy had this life-saving technology and because I'm a woman and because I'm meek and meager and nobody would listen to me and, and they pinned it all on me and it was all these people's fault, you know, and it's going to be, that's what it's going to be. And these and kids by the way, grow st- up in a lie. Statistically, actually women for white collar crimes get sentenced to half the amount of time that men do. So. For for what she did, uh, the average man has been sentenced to 20 years. Wow. 
So she's going to say yes because I'm a woman, but honestly, not really true. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. last thing I will say, this was the last little bit that I was like, wow, this is crazy. <clears throat> um, the father of Theranos whistleblower, Tyler Schultz, addresses the court. Oh. Um, if I know Tanya will, will remember this, but Tyler Schultz was the grandson of George Schultz. George Schultz was a former secretary of state. Huge deal. Like, huge, huge deal. He had joined Elizabeth Holmes's board, and she, Tyler saw that this was a scam. Because Tyler was tried. doing an internship there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Tyler saw this was a scam, and he tried to warn his grandfather. And this woman literally manipulated his grandfather into believing her over his own grandson yeah. and actually kind of ripped their family apart for a while, which was really, really sad. Um, George Schultz passed away last year, but Alex Schultz, the father of Theranos whistleblower. This is all, this is also from that um, wall street journal article. Alex Schultz, the father of Theranos whistleblower Tyler Schultz, addressed the court ahead of Elizabeth Holmes's sentencing. He discussed her vengeance against his son, who was also a source for the Wall Street Journal story starting in 2015. Mr. Schultz turned to Mrs. Ms. Holmes' partner. This is funny. So the, the boy toy, his name is Billy Evans. Mr. Schultz turned to Ms. Holmes' partner in the courtroom, Billy Evans, and told him he empathized with how people followed Mr. Evans around because of his association with Ms. Holmes. So basically they're trying, they were trying to portray it as, oh, the media just turned it into this circus and they follow us around and it's so awful and blah, 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 right? And Mr. Schultz was like, yeah, I empathize with that, said Mr. Schultz, because Ms. Holmes had hired a private investigator to follow and terrorize his family. My son slept with a knife under his pillow every night, thinking that someone was going to come and murder him in the night, Mr. Schultz told the court. Mr. Schultz's dad, former Secretary of State George Schultz, was a Theranos investor and board, board director and introduced the family to Ms. Holmes. Alex Schultz said Ms. Holmes preyed upon his dad's weaknesses. My dad never wanted to become irrelevant, Mr. Schultz said. Elizabeth Holmes recognized that weakness, targeted him, and became part of that window dressing. She put a stain on my father's career, Mr. Schultz said. We're happy this is finally coming to an end. That's sad. So, yeah, she can sit here and bitch and whine and moan and cry. It's so sad that the media is just turning me into this villain. Bitch, you use the media. Right. Okay. You use the media to your advantage. You're the one that went out there and told everybody that this shit worked. Okay. Now you're mad that the media actually did their job. Sorry. Number one. Number two, sucks that your life sucks. A lot of people's lives sucked for a long ass time because of you. Again, the private investigators and all that bullshit. No, you don't get to play the victim. You were the bully. You were the perpetrator. You were the fraudster. And you got what you deserve. Now, do I think she's going to go to prison anytime soon? No. Do I think she's going to go to prison in April? No. They're going to find a way to delay it. And they're going to say, we're going to appeal. Or can she stay out of prison until it's appealed? So, that's what's going yeah. on. Give her a chance to be with her baby or whatever. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that is our Theranos. Jess looks like she's got to go. She's like, I'm done. No, I just have some very rambunctious kids who aren't listening, and it's starting to frazzle my, my brain feelers a little bit. Well, if it makes you feel better, I, I couldn't hear anything that they were doing. That no, does make uh -uh. me feel better. That does make me feel better. <laughs> Because they're being, they're being little buttholes right now. Liam crawling behind you like nobody can see him. Because <laughs> if you crawl, you're invisible. There you go. <laughs> so I know we haven't been recording consistently, guys. We've been having a lot of technical challenges. But we've also come up with a plan. We're going to have some big announcements here coming. So everybody who's stuck with us, thank you so much. Stay tuned. 
we have some really cool things coming for you in the new year. So stay tuned for that. But we just had to jump on. We've been waiting for the end of this Theranos story for years. And we just had to had to give it to you guys. So I can't believe bitch is pregnant again. And seeing all these people on Twitter defend her is oh, insane. <clears throat> there's a good, there's, there's plenty that are like, fuck this whore. Yeah. And they're right. But the ones that are defending her still just <clears throat> blows yeah. my mind. Yeah. And I, again, I apologize for my 900 year old smoker voice. Fucking <laughs> <gasps> Marge Simpson over there. <laughs> I sound like a smoking bathroom attendant in hell. Like, <laughs> dear God. But you're getting Lost better. That's all that matters. Lost souls left. I know. <laughs> I love it. All right. So what do you guys think? I'd love to hear in the comments section. Do you guys think she got what she deserved? Are you happy with the sentence? Do you think she's actually going to serve it anytime soon? I would really like I mean, to know from our listeners what you guys I think. am glad that they did sentence her. Um, mm -hmm. I'm leery as to whether or not she's actually going to serve any or 85% of that sentence. Yeah. And I think with the baby daddy she's got, um, she'll be back at it if given the chance within the next, I don't know, 10 years. We'll see her in the news. And it'll be her and somebody else. Some it'll it, honestly, it'll probably be like her and Ivanka Trump trying to to you know uh, harvest cat eggs so that they oh can God. make some sort of weird rejuvenating eye cream or some shit. And <laughs> I just I really feel like she's gonna come up with something even more elaborate next time because she obviously has not learned her lesson because she still feels no. like she's not done anything wrong. And that's no. how I feel like she's, that's, I, I really feel like it's going to be something honestly, just totally off the wall. Even the judge said like he was counting it against her that she still has not accepted responsibility. No. Like, and she because, won't. And I, I do, that's the one thing. Okay. Credit where it's due. I do feel like I got to give credit to the judge for that because he's still <clears> like you saying that you failed isn't accepting responsibility. You didn't fail. You committed a crime. You committed a successful crime for a while. You actually succeeded. Right. In committing a crime, which is why we're here. So right. I do feel like that's the one thing that the judge was like, you're still not accepting responsibility because she's not. Mm -mm. No, no, she's not. Like I said, she'll be back. If she serves any of it, I'll be surprised. Um, yeah. and I really feel like it'll be an even more elaborate scheme. And I think if they see of anything, and I think that she would even, I, I think that she would have enough common sense to keep herself out of the, out of the spotlight next time. And then once it's a, a, a half witted success, right? Like she's reinventing the popsicle or something. Um, then she'll come forward and say, oh, this was me, all me yeah. or whatever, you know? Yeah. But I think that it's going to be something. I agree. Be I something. think she learned. I think she, she learned, learned how to scam movie. better. She learned. Mm -hmm. That's all mm -hmm. she learned. Yeah. We'll see. yeah. All right. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Tell us what you think down in the comments. Um, so until next time, I'm Laura Mack. I'm Tanya Edwards. I'm Jessica James. Love your faces. Smooches. Keep it sane. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance.